happy day to all today we are going to see previous year net exam question in operating system yes let's we go so what is the first question semaphores are used to so what is semaphore semaphores or variables which is used to do synchronize the process okay so when deadlock happen what is deadlock if two or more process uh fighting for one resource okay so what happened deadlock is happened to avoid that we are using the variable semaphore semaphore is a variable that is they are used to synchronize the resources that is you wait okay a person a should wait until b completes if b b is executes ask that a should wait okay so semaphores or variables which is used to synchronize the critical resource to prevent them deadlock so what are the variables is p and v p means wait okay p means you have to wait v means signal that is you can enter so s is the semaphore variable s is the semaphore variable okay see you consider Yes, semaphore. That is, a first person is coming and waiting for the CPU. Okay, so first person is coming. So I have to use minus one. So minus one. So what is the p value is minus one. If another person is coming, okay, and waiting, what happened? Minus minus. That is minus two. Okay, minus one minus one. and if one more person is coming and waiting so minus 2 minus 3 okay what is the semaphore value is now semaphore value is minus 3 okay three persons came and waiting in the, for the cpu so minus 3 is the semaphore value now so now the cpu is going to execute okay execute means signal okay what i will do Plus one minus three plus one. What is the value? I am taking one process to the CPU. So and I will increment the semaphore variable. So now minus two. That is only two processes are waiting in the queue. Okay. So because one is one process executes. Okay. Finished. And now. the semaphore value is minus 2 this is semaphore value based on the p and v i am telling that so now it is minus 2 and one more process now i am going to execute what happened plus plus 1 so minus 2 plus 1 that is if you are giving signal means you have to increment plus 1 if it is i am waiting means i have to decrease by Minus one, so minus two plus one that is begin minus one. Okay, so second uh, process also executed. So how many one and again one, so minus one and one that is zero. At last, what is the semaphore value? So three process are executed. The semaphore value is zero. Okay, so the semaphore value is zero means what is meaning? There is no process in the queue. there is no process in the queue if they will ask like this also if s equal to if s equal to minus 3 if s equal to minus 3 means what what so all three persons are waiting in the queue right so if s is minus 3 means three waiting process okay s means three waiting process okay that's it so if they are asking semaphores are used to synchronize critical resource to prevent the deadlock so option a is the uh, answer if they give just s equal to 4 means that uh, signaling is 4 okay that is four process can come and execute it So if it is plus four means signal four, four process can come and execute. If it is three minus three means that is three waiting process is there. That's it. The next question is in which of the following storage replacement strategies is a program placed 
in the largest available hole in the memory so there are uh, three uh, storage re replacement strategy first bit best fit and worst bit first bit means most choose first hole which is largest enough okay at that first time itself i am seeing that that is largest enough so for example you consider this is the memory location okay this have an 100 capacity this is having 200 capacity this have an 300 capacity so my process is uh, I requested 50 memory okay I have file I have a, some file so it has 50 memory so if I am going to the first uh, block and I am seeing that it is available so I am just placing my process here itself though that so that is called first fit I choose first hole which is large enough okay this is enough for me this 100 uh, spaces enough for to execute process 1 okay if it is if my uh, if my request is considered 150 then which is the first fit this block is the then this will become the first block because um, this is not a, uh, enough right 100 is not enough when when my process request is 150 so at that time based on the first fit the second block will be available second block is the correct answer understood what i am saying if it is choosing first hole which is large enough okay that, that is not it doesn't mean uh, this is the first hole has to occupy it doesn't mean that it means that choose the first hole which is largest enough to hold my process okay so based on the process one it requested 150 memory or uh, sorry 150 not so this is also the capacity is 100 right so here the capacity is 100 if you consider this one as 250 okay this is 250 so then p1 will be come in the second block so this is based on the first fit okay best fit means smallest available hole that is largest enough so you are taking out all the memory blocks which is uh, enough which is large enough to hold my process that is called best fit first fit means we have i am giving a largest hole for the particular process if i am giving a largest hole largest memory to your process if the memory uh, the process is only uh, requested a 20 memory okay 20 capacity memory but i am allocating uh, what here if consider this one is an highest block right this is the highest block i am giving uh, to this for process 2 i am giving this block so this is called as an worst fit i am giving a largest uh, available hole in the memory a hole is also nothing but a memory okay a free memory is called a hole so for this and all will be you know uh, for internet for atm transaction uh, for this kind of process they are giving largest available hole in the memory so that no uh, interruption will be happen right so based on the application they are using different types of uh, memory st storage replacement strategies best fit first fit and worst fit so in the question what they are asking in which of the following storage replacement strategy is the program placed in a largest available hole in a largest available hole that is nothing but worst fit and buddy buddy is uh, is kind of a memory system which is used in the uh, olden days that is buddy is nothing but they are dividing into two okay based on this two strategy hierarchical strategy in olden days they used olden days this is buddy system okay the next question is remote computing system involves the use of time sharing systems and so remote computing system so this is called as a remote computing okay so what happened when the process is requested okay from this uh, small client and all i am requested the remote remote server or remote computing systems involved so uh, this remote computing system which involves the use of time sharing system and also based on the batch processing 
batch processing means if the process is coming uh, continuously the remote computing system what it will do means the same kind of process is batched together okay if similar jobs or group put together so what is batch processing similar jobs or grouped together similar jobs or group put together uh into one is called as batch is called as batch so this process is uh, executed in the remote computing system remote computing system involves the use of time sharing system and batch processing okay and the next question is non modifiable procedures are called non modifiable procedures so non modifiable procedures non modifiable procedure means you are writing some sub program right you are writing sub program you are calling the sub program in the main function here non modifiable procedures are called reentrant procedure that is this procedure whenever this procedure calls in a main it will come here and then it executes after completion of this sub program it will go again without any issues that is called reentrant so it is reentering to the main function without any issues right that is called as non modifiable procedures non modifiable procedures are also called as a reentrant procedure the next one is called disk scheduling so what are the types of disk scheduling in operating system right uh, fifo uh, first in first uh, and then sjf shortest job first scheduling <coughs> uh, scan scheduling c scan scheduling look up look scheduling c look so so first what are you know you just mark it so disk scheduling is compulsorily come and uh, scan okay then batch processing lifo or fifo right if you have any dot you just hold it okay then time sharing so time sharing will come compulsorily for round robin so round robin is based on the time sharing okay so the first one is 2 and second one is we have if you have a doubt means normally batch processing fifo okay so if you have a doubt means you just hold it and uh, C is this is option A is two, and option C is one. So check it out wherever option A is two and C is one. So that is available in the option C, right? So B is four. So batch processing is FIFO based. First come, first in, first out. And interrupt processing is LIFO last in, first out, which is based on the LIFO structure. D is Three. The next question is moving process from main memory into disk is called as what swapping. Okay, so if we have a disk, so moving process from main memory to disk is called as so main memory this this one and this is a virtual memory. Okay, the largest disk. So from main memory to if you are moving that or from that virtual memory to M. bringing that this two processes are called swapping okay they can also ask which is swap in and swap out so from the main memory to i am placing in the virtual memory that is called as swap out process so from the virtual memory to i am bringing to the main memory okay main memory is swap in process so swap in so moving process from main memory to disk is called as swapping the process and the next one is the principle of locality of reference principle of locality of reference justify the use of so what is locality of references that is uh, in a page replacement in a fifo or a stay whatever the page replacement so what happens uh, there are many page faults are coming right so to avoid the number of page fault what they are doing is so uh, related storage location so for a frequency for a set of uh, frequency of time okay for set of frequency of time see for this up to 20 replacement uh, what happens only the three page frames 1 2 3 this three pages are repeated continuously 
but in a different way one and then two and then three so if i am shuffling means what happened there is no um, number of page folds or increases so what they are doing is uh, related storage location being frequently accessed so what are the frames which i am going to frequently accessed for a particular set of time so up to 20 uh, 20 pages only these three pages have an highly required okay so what i am doing is one two three is set. so up to 20 there is no page fault right so up to 20 no page fault will be occurred so this is the concept of uh, principle of locality of re references justify the use of catch memory by using the uh, catch memory okay this is also called as working set model this is also called as working set model so in uh, first 20 replacement i will set uh, this is w1 i am setting 1 2 3 and then working set 2 is 4 5 6 okay and then working set 3 is another frame okay so what are the frequent number of uh, pages are coming that page i taken and fixed in a catch memory that is called as principality of uh, locality of reference or which is called as a working set model this is a working set model uh, process in an os which is very big so i am telling you uh, that most uh, simple the next one is banker's algorithm so what is they are using banker's algorithm banker's algorithm is used for deadlock avoidance mm -hmm. to avoid the deadlock we are using banker's algorithm this i will explain when any process sum comes okay yes the next question which is the correct definition of a valid process transition in an operating system okay wake up so there are uh, how many transitions in an operating system first a new whenever a new process is enters this is the first one okay uh, for example when a new uh, student is coming to a college that is new right they they ask them to sit in a uh, reception right that is a ready process they are sitting in the reception okay so and then what happened if that particular documents are correct they they will be go to the go to the running process that is they will meet the principal right so who will do dispatcher some person will be there that person take take the student and give it to the uh, and give it to the principal right that is called as a dispatcher so new then ready then the dispatcher will take the ready process whoever sitting in the ready uh, in the reception they will take one by one and give it to the principal the principal will again check if there is anything is missed means they will be what they will say you bring the xerox or you bring that this or other card something like so this is called as a block or waiting state so they will have a waiting state until if they give that particular documents correctly they will again enter into the ready queue and they will again enter into the ready state to running state and then the process is terminated the process is running after running it is term it's cutting down okay it's called terminate so terminated process okay so now you see which is the correct definition of a valid process transition in an operating system so wake up wake up means ready to running no, wake up means new to ready process. Okay, that is called wake up. And a dispatcher is ready to running. This is called dispatcher. The dispatcher will do from the ready process to running process. So, this is the correct answer. Block means ready to running. Block from running to ready. It's not ready to running, it's not running to ready okay so it is wrong timer run out ready to block so ready to it won't come block there is no arrow from this to this only running process will come to the blocked state so ready to block is wrong right so wake up means new to ready state
okay dispatcher is the correct answer from a ready state to i am going to the running state is called as dispatcher the next question is the register or main memory location which contains the effective address of the operand is called as so pointer pointer is a variable where you can store the address of another variable right so the register or main memory location which contains the effective address of the operand is known as index register okay index register which contains the uh, location and also the address the value so it's manipulated the value is manipulated and then based on that the effective address will be created and it is stored so that is called as an index register that is called as an index register for example if i am entering 5 5 mod 100 that is equal to 5 so the data is added with some this is called as an uh, hashing right so some technique and then they will add it 5 to 5 okay so if consider 15 15 mod 100 is 15 so 15 plus 50 that is the index register is 30 it is stored in address 30 so this is called index register okay based on some calculation uh, the effective address is manipulated and the value is stored in that location that is called as index register the next one is called producer consumer problem so the producer consumer problem can be solved using semaphores or event counters or monitors all the above okay so to, to synchronize the process producer consumer problem is uh, mainly for that that is um, some person is coming okay one person is the chopstick and all coming right one person is using that means other person should wait that's it nothing big producer consumer consumer means they are using producer means i am giving the resources okay producer consumer problem can be solved using semaphores event counters and monitors all the above is the answers and again the same question non-modifiable procedures are also called as re-enterant procedures so without affecting anything it is re-entering again to the main function that is called as non-modifiable procedures or re-entrant procedures the next question is banker's algorithm what's the banker's algorithm is used for deadlock avoidance to avoid the deadlock okay so before i am allocating a particular resource to the process i am checking out okay so that the deadlock will be avoided so that is the main purpose of banker's algorithm banker's algorithm is used for deadlock avoidance the next question is the first operating system of a microprocessor the processor is cp bar m control program for micro computers so this is the first os of microprocessor the next one in processor management round robin method essentially use the preemptive version of in process management round robin method essentially use preemptive version of what FIFO. So first FIFO in a FIFO plus preemptive. Preemptive means the process can release after a uh, before the completion. I am preempted. Okay. Non preemption means no giving. Okay. Until completes, I won't give my process. Preemptive means I can give. Okay. Without my uh, completion of my job, uh, a particular uh, quantum of time i am giving my processor to the other person right so this is based on the in process management round robin method essentially use the preemptive version of fifo plus preemptive okay this both is together is called as round robin scheduling this both are called as round robin scheduling the next question a page fault what is page fault if the page is if a particular page is not this is main memory okay main memory if the particular page i am searching uh, i am searching some process a okay a if a is not in a 
memory right this is a virtual memory in a virtual memory only there so in this blog it is not there okay this page a is not in the current main memory that is called as page fault okay a page fault is an access to the page that is not currently in main memory a page fault is an access to the page which is not currently in the main memory and the next question is synchronize critical resources to prevent deadlock synchronize critical resources to prevent the deadlock is called as p operator they are using v operator using this both will come under what semaphores so semaphores are used to synchronize critical resource to prevent deadlock what is p p means wait and v means signal in the next question the memory allocation scheme subject to external fragmentation external fragmentation means what so there are memory blocks are there here pre1 process is completed and p2 process completed okay so this memory is wasted here and there okay this is called as this block is waste okay which is not in a uh, so this is called as external fragmentation external fragmentation a particular block is uh, wasted okay uh, because of not contiguous that block will become wasted because of segmentation because i am segmenting right this two uh, what three four processes i am segmented so that is called uh, that's why external fragmentation happens the next question is what is an operating system what is an operating system it's a collection of hardware components collection of input output devices collection of software routines all the above okay operating system is not a collection of it consists of hardware files okay it consists of io files okay so io devices i would device files okay device files this and all what these are all software routines these are all some functions okay if you it consists of hardware component that doesn't operating system if it consists collection of io devices that is if mouse and double light pen if everything is present we cannot say that one as an operating system right an operating system is a collection of software routines such as a collection of device files collection of io files okay that is software routines routines mean what sub programs if it consists of some of set of sub programs then it is called as an ons collection of software routines is the correct answer the next question is dash is one of the preemptive scheduling algorithm preemptive scheduling means that i can uh, remove uh, from the processor okay so that is uh, for a set of quantum of time a particular process will execute and then uh, other process will execute that is nothing but for 4 4 minutes it will execute okay for 4 minutes process a executes okay 4 minutes b executes 4 minutes c executes so this is called as preemptive so after this time i am just taking out the a process and place the b process and then i am placing the c process so this kind of scheduling is called as preemptive scheduling so shortest job first will come no this is a non preemptive scheduling shortest job first is an non preemptive scheduling whereas round robin is a preemptive scheduling priority based this is also an non preemptive scheduling and shortest job next this will come into preemptive scheduling but the name is different shortest job remaining next is j or n this is not s j n shortest job remaining next is an algorithm which is also preemptive scheduling algorithm so the exact answer is round robin and the next question is software to create a job queue okay so i am creating a job queue so whenever you are giving a print or when you are giving a, um, so what happens the all the printer is come and save in a job queue so the job queue is called as spooling spooler okay so the spooler will what happen it will give one by one print out 
okay so to avoid the collision between the multiple process to avoid the collision in a multiple process all the jobs are queued together and placed in one place and it will be executed one by one that's called as pooler yes the next question is the loading operating system from secondary memory to primary memory so what i said secondary memory to primary memory okay so what it is loading operating system from secondary memory to primary memory is called as booting so os itself booting okay so whenever you are switch on the computer what happens loading all the os files from the secondary memory into the primary memory and the next question is part of a program where the shared memory is accessed and which should be executed indivisibly is called as read it the read the question again okay part of a program okay i am taking a particular program okay so i am executing that program I, where the shared memory is accessed okay i am accessing this okay so i am accessing p1 and i should not in devised indivisible means i i didn't give i didn't divide to another person just i am holding and i am executing that that process name is called what mutual exclusion it's not the critical section when critical section is just an executable process the process is called as a critical section so uh, Uh, the shared memory is accessed and which should be executed indivisibly which is executed indivisibly that uh, that process is called as mutual exclusion mutual exclusion means only one executed okay it doesn't allow others to execute okay the next question is which page replacement policy suffers from belladis anomaly which is suffer from belladis anomaly it is above fifo what is belladis anomaly i am thinking that page frame is 3 page frame if i increases to 5 page frame i thought that the a uh, page fault will decreases but that is not the real situation when number of page frame is increases number of page frame increases number of page fault number of page fault is also increases or decreases so increases or decreases both may happen so the such a situation is called as belladis anomaly such a situation is called as belladis anomaly the next one cache memory what is cache memory which is an high speed ram which is an high speed ram the next one is how many states can a process be in so how many states new ready running running then after running terminate if it is a running any issues blocked or wait right and then coming to the register so there are how many states 1 2 3 4 then 5 so five states so very clear in this five states because in a five states there will question there will be a question the next question a program has five virtual pages number 0 to 5 if the pages are referenced in the order with three page frames the total number of page frames so three page frames so page frames you have to consider as a for this frame so 1 2 3 i am drawing this write down this value 0 1 2 3 0 1 4 0 1 2 3 4 4 okay so and then draw 3 3 in this so based on the fifo they are asking based on the fifo what is the number of page fault so based on the fifo what is the number of page faults i am using red so first zero is entering zero is there no zero is not there so i am writing zero then one is not there no one is not there this is also a page fault if the page is not present in a uh, main memory it is called as a page fault so two is present no so zero one two so this is also a page fault 
so 3 is there no if 3 is not there what I have to do have to replace the first page so which came first 0 only came first first in first out I, I just out the first came process that is 0 frame then I placed 3 1 2 so now it is 0 so what it came first it came 3 2 1 1 is first right so it will become like a wave okay 1 so I replaced so option 3 0 2 okay now 1 is not present so I am replacing this so 3 0 1 so 3 0 1 this is also page 4 this is also page 4 and 4 so 4 I am replacing this 4 0 1 so 0 is present 1 is present this is page hit and again 2 so 2 means which come first 0 so you have to check see after 3 who came 0 ok so I have to check from here from this place to this place 4 2 then 1 so now what 3 so 3 is not there now it is replaced 0 and then 1 ok so 4 2 3 again page hit 4 is a page hit right this is a page fall so how many page falls 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so there are 9 page fault so in this you see uh, the page replacement will come like like a wave so first 0 and then 1 then 2 and then again a portion then again this 0 0 after that this so it has come like a wave ok always remember in a FIFO uh, replacement it will be like a wave it will be like a wave ok the next question is average process size equal to s bytes each page entry requires e bytes the optimum page size is given by root of 2sc here s is the size average process size and e is the uh, bytes page entry requires e bytes okay so there's a just formula you have to remember that the next question is the aging algorithm with a 0 0.5 is used to predict run time the previous runs from oldest to most recent or 40 comma 20 20 and 15 milliseconds the prediction for the next time will be and so for this uh, that's a big calculation for aging algorithm uh, uh, to avoid that we can also calculate like this first find out the average of this four values so 40 20 20 and then 15 so what is the uh, next time next prediction time is just add it so totally it is 95 divided by 4 that is equal to 23.6 so you can write it as in 25 milliseconds right the next question is an example of non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm is non preemptive the process does not uh, give it cpu until completion of its process that is non preemptive you know right yes so shortest job first scheduling is the non preemptive cpu scheduling algorithm whereas the round robin priority fair share scheduling these are all come under preemptive in preemptive version is also there in in this type of scheduling okay and the next question is there are n process in memory a process pen fraction p of its time waiting for io to complete the cpu utilization is given by so the CPU utilization is written as 1 minus p to the power of n. So n is the number of process, n is the number of process and p is the fraction delay, p is the spends, the process spends a fraction p of its time waiting for I go to compute. So, so it's a time delay p. And the next question is if the hit ratio of TLB is 80 percentage and it takes 50 nanoseconds to search TLB. So TLB is 50 nanoseconds and the main memory is 150 nanoseconds just write it down and hit ratio is 80 percentage and the miss ratio is uh, 1 minus H is 0.20 just calculate these four things 1, 2, 3 
and 4. Okay, and effective memory access time is h into TLB plus main memory plus 1 minus h into TLB plus 2 into main memory. Okay, so h is 0 .0, 0 0.80. Here TLB plus main memory equal to 50 plus 150 that is equal to 200. 200 into 0 0.80 that is you will get 160 and then plus here 0 0.20 into 50 plus 2 into 150 that is 300, 300 plus 50, okay, 300 plus 50, 350, 350 plus uh, into 0 0.2, 70, which is coming uh, 230, here actually the question is some, something missing, it is, okay, wrong, so uh, as per this question, the answer is 230, okay. The next question is a computer has 6 tape drives, a computer has 6 tape drives with n process computing for this. So totally I have 6 tape drives, okay, n person, n, n processes computing for them, so, okay, n process, each process may need 2 drives, okay. So consider 1, 2, 3 process, each processor, this is process, okay. This requires 2 and this requires 2 and this requires 2. For which value of n is the system deadlock free? So if number of process is there, so that uh, system will be, deadlock will be freed. Okay, so if you consider, so R is uh, there is a formula resource is greater than or equal to p into n minus 1 okay so resources is 6 this should be greater than or equal to so number of uh, see consider uh, uh, in this processes or there are three processor if there are three processor p 1 2 3 so it requires each one two tape drives. I am giving totally I have six tape drives. I am giving two two tape drives. Is there any deadlock? No deadlock, right? And if there are only two, which value of n? Each process may need two drives for which value of n? Okay, n is number of process. So if n is uh, which value of n is the system deadlock free? If there are two processor deadlock free. Okay, only two processor is there means it is free. This is also deadlock free. Okay, three is also no deadlock. So they are asking uh, but you see six uh, six if there are six process if I giving all the six to 1 1 1 then it will lead to deadlock right if there are 6 processes this will lead to deadlock so d is won't come an answer so option 1 2 3 in this uh, how can i uh, utilize maximum number of process here they mix uh, miss the word max so which max value of n is the deadlock free that is c 3 if there are 3 processor the deadlock will be free The next one, four jobs J1, J2, J3, J4 are waiting to be run. Their respective run time are 9, 6, 3 and 5 respectively. In order to minimize average response time, the job should be run in which order? Okay, the job should run in which order so that I will, uh, my average response time will be decreases. Okay, so for that uh, you just do it in an ascending order. Okay, so first you have to write 3 and then 5, then 6 and then 9. Okay, 3 is belongs to J3 job, 5 is belongs to J4 job and 6 is belongs to J2 job and 9 is belong to J1 job. So, J3, J4 and J2, J1. So, option D is the correct answer. If you are executed in this order, job 3 first and then job 4, job 2. So, what happens? You were Mini, uh, your average response time is minimized. Okay. The next one is n processes are waiting for I/O. 
A process spends a fraction P of its time in IO weight, the CPU utilization will be, the CPU utilization will be 1 minus P power N. So, this is B1 minus P power N. Okay. The next question is, in a paging system, it takes 30 nanoseconds to search TLB, 90 nanoseconds to access main memory. So, hit ratio is 70. So, already told that H into TLB plus MM. So, the formula for effective memory access is hit ratio into TLB plus main memory plus miss ratio that is 1 minus H into TLB plus 2 into main memory. Okay, so this is the formula for average memory access time. Okay, so for this, what is the hit ratio? 0 0.70. TLB is 30 nanoseconds and access main memory is 90 nanoseconds. Plus 1 minus H is 1 minus point, uh, 0 0.70 equal to 0 0.30. Plus TLB is 30 nanoseconds. Plus 2 into main memory, 2 into 190, 2 into 90 is 180, ok. So, 90 plus 30 equal to 120, uh, 120 into 0 0.70 and then 7007 to 14, 484. So, here it is 84 plus 0 0.30 into 30, 180 plus 30 that is equal to 210 into 0. 3, that is equal to 63. So, 63.0. So, that is when you add 9 plus 4, 4 plus 3, 7, 8 plus 6, 14. So, 147. 147 nanosecond is the effective memory access time. The next question is an example of non preemptive scheduling algorithm. Non preemptive scheduling. So, which is non preemptive. Round robin is preemptive, priority scheduling, pre shortest job first is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm. The next question is an example of distributed OS. So, an example of distributed OS is Hamoiba. Okay. Which one of the following OS treats hardware as a file system? So, it treats the hardware as a file system. Okay. Unix. Unix treats hardware as a file system. Next question. In which of the following ready to execute processes must be present in RAM? Uh, so, which of the following ready to execute processes must be present in RAM? So, multiprocessing, multiprogramming and a multitasking. So, in all this process, many processes are present in RAM. So, uh, such, a, such a concept is coming under multiprocessing or multiprogramming or multitasking. So, all is, all the above is the correct answer. The next question is, if the executing program size, if the executing program size is greater than existing RAM of a computer, it is still possible to execute the program if the OS supports. Uh, so, the question is if the executing program size is greater than existing RAM, it is still possible to execute the program if the OS supports multitasking or virtual memory paging system. So, uh, so the correct answer is uh, virtual memory, right? Yes, yes, virtual memory is correct because. Uh, so, what happens? So, if the memory is not there, I can bring it from the virtual memory. Okay, I will uh, I will separate some uh, uh, in a virtual memory, use that and then I will execute that. Executing program size is greater than executing RAM of a computer. It is still possible to execute the program if the OS supports virtual memory. If I supported, if I am able to access this virtual memory, okay. Uh, for example, um, the internet, okay. We are not holding in our system, we are not holding everything, okay. We are just uh, from the server, from the virtual memory, we are taking all the data whenever it is required, whatever it is required. I am just taking from, taking from the virtual memory and that is OneDrive, okay, cloud and everything is a virtual memory, 
okay my program size my system uh, size capable is lesser but it has the capable my but my system has the capable to uh, execute the program of virtual memory then i can execute my program okay yes the next question is assume n segments in memory and a page size of p bytes the wastage on account of internal fragmentation as the formula is np divided by 2 bytes np divided by 2 bytes the next question is variable partition memory management technique with compaction result variable partition memory management technique with compaction which is called as minimal wastage why we are uh, going for compaction see so many memory are wasting so okay here what are the lines here it is wasted okay here it is wasted so here are null occupied you consider whatever it is so what i am doing is i am combining this wasted memory okay in in down okay so combine together and placed in the down this is called as compaction so this is called compaction and i am utilizing this memory to the another process so variable partition memory management technique with compaction results in what a reduction of fragmentation yes reduction of fragmentation and minimal wastage so this is called as a reduction of fragmentation fragmentation uh, so this fragmentation right here and all wastage this wastage will be reduces okay wastage will be reduces this also called minimal wastage but the exact uh, answer is reduction of fragmentation and this is a theory okay variable partition memory management technique with compaction result in reduction of fragmentation this will be available in the operating system by silbersha book you can check it out in the process management round robin method is essentially the preemptive version of round robin method is a preemptive version of fifo okay so it is an fifo version okay so fifo plus preemptive already told fifo plus preemptive concept is called as round robin this is called as an round robin method okay The next question: A page fault. A page fault is occurs which an access to the page which is not currently in main memory. It is not currently in main memory. 